Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray, unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power. Good job, everybody. Welcome. Good to see you here uh, for you in the sanctuary, for you uh, tuning in on live stream. Hope this service can be a help to you. Uh, in the video of that uh, song that we just did, there's, there's a guy that's got this massive kind of stick that he's just bashing onto the ground, <laughs> some kind of a percussion thing. Uh, we didn't need that because we have Connor this yeah. morning. But, uh... We could buy Connor a stick. Yeah, that's right. 
Well, it's good to be here. Um, just a couple of things as we continue. The community supper is on Tuesday. And uh, again, just a huge thank you to all the people that take part. It's, it's a big project. Uh, the fat team works all week doing other things. There's a, a Wednesday group that feeds families and there's just all kinds of stuff associated with the community supper. But um, thank you to everyone taking part. And just a reminder, that's Tuesday at uh, five o'clock. Heather, where's Heather? There's Heather. You have your, you have donned your apron. I am all ready. Hi. Good morning. It's so nice to see all of you. I am, um, I am Heather Cable, if you don't know who I am. Um, but I also wanted you to know that I am now self-proclaiming myself the first press social convener be because that's what happens sometimes. Um, <laughs> today is the picnic. Um, we have too many hot dogs and hamburgers for the amount of people here today. So please bring a big appetite um, outside. Cross your fingers, cross your legs. Kimberly says it's not gonna rain till three o'clock on her weather map. Somebody else said something different, but I'm gonna trust her because that's what I want it to be. Um, if you didn't bring a chair, you can probably have mine because I'm going to wear my special apron today and um, social can be. That's all. See you later. Oh, uh, Cobb's bread. Yes. Um, we have too much Cobb's bread for what we need right now, so you will see some at the door or at the picnic area. Please grab some and take it with you. Okay? Are we good? Good. Okay, I'm going to go cook hot dogs. Bye. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Trust Heather to show up in her apron, but I have my train whistle. You know why I'm standing up here, don't you? It's for Vacation Bible Camp. The train arrives four weeks tomorrow. So we're gearing up, and we've had a committee really hard at work. And I want to say a big thank you to everyone who has already volunteered, and to those of you who are also watching online. We're grateful for all your enthusiasm and the help that you're giving us. But we need a little more help. There's a few gaps that we need to be filled and I would just hope that you would prayerfully look at your schedule and perhaps find time to help us out. This is what we need. We need a couple of strong young or old fellows to be here at 7.30ish in the morning to help set up. We have to put tables outside in the parking lot. It's, it's a no-brainer, it's just we need the guys to help us do it. So that's one little gap we need. The other one is, we cannot decorate the front of this sanctuary until after the sermon on the 17th Sunday. So anyone who has Sunday afternoon available, we really need you. Veronica and Bev Kennedy are heading this, the decorating up. Veronica is here right now. I am so pleased she phoned and said she would help do this because she's fabulous at it. But she needs help. Sunday afternoon, the 17th, if anyone has any time, please. It's a big job. It's a fun job, but we'd like to have you here. We have another need, we're almost there. We need a couple of more group helpers. Group helpers aren't site leaders. They just help marshal the children from one site to the other around the church. There is, we have enough leaders. They are always adults, but we need a few more helpers. Three would be great. And finally, strangely enough, we need more campers this year. We are currently only at 70 campers. So we're hoping that there's going to be a flood of registrations now that the school year is ending. And um, we hope to have, well, we can have up to 150. So those grandparents out here or out there in, in watching, um, if you have any grandchildren that would like to attend, we'd love to have them. 
Please, everybody, just speak to your neighbors on the street or people you know and let them know that any child from senior kindergarten to grade six is really welcome and we have lots of room. And I hope soon we won't have lots of room. So please consider it. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. The baby is here. Oh, my goodness. So AJ had a baby. How, how many weeks ago, AJ? Two, three weeks. And Dad's name again is Dalton. Well, welcome. And does baby have a name? Alexander Jason. Beautiful. Well, congratulations to you guys. Oh, my goodness. Well, look at him. He's been so good so far. He's just perfect. That's why I'm glad you brought him. I look forward to, to meeting him after. Um, so lastly, just uh, for announcements, we, we have a couple of slides to show of uh, graduates who are either part of this church or associated with this church. So just congratulations to all of these young people. This is Keegan Aldred uh, graduating from grade eight. He is um, Nolan's brother. Jonathan uh, Besley uh, is going, uh, graduating from grade eight and going to CCI. And Jonathan is our sound person today, right up there. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Uh, Ethan Doas is going to Our Lady of the Bay, graduating grade 8. Brady Foss is off to CCI. Congratulations, Brady. Kyle. Kyle has been such a part of this church. I, I can't believe when I do children's times and Kyle is not coming up to, to sit on the stairs, but he is going to high school in the fall at CCI. Miranda. There's Miranda. Did you know there's going to be a picture of you up there today? Oh, you did. Okay. <laughs> That's a great picture. Congratulations, Miranda. And you're going to uh, Our Lady of the Bay for grade nine. And Sebastian Robinson as well. Oh, that's a, a great picture of Sebastian uh, in action uh, to, off to CCI. And then uh, our grade 12 graduates, Avery, uh, is Nolan's older sister, is off to Western University. Uh, Alex Doner, who, of course, is Sheila and Don Doner's grandson, and he lives at the beach, and his parents are Barry and Heather Doner, and Alex is going to be apprenticing uh, in a restaurant this fall. He's going to be a chef. Adeline Dubois, uh, grandparents are Shirley and Murray McAlpine, who are actually at the beach this morning because the Wasa Wasaga Beach Church is having their anniversary. And so they, they, they're going to try to come back for some food after, I think. But Adelaine is their granddaughter, and she is off to Lakehead University. Grays and Fairley, uh, oh my goodness, uh, Denman and Yancey's grandson. And uh, he's going to take a year off, good for him. Uh, what a great picture of Grays and... Uh, and then he's going to, to Car Carleton for science in, in 2023. And then Jill Fawcett is uh, taking a year off to travel. What a beautiful picture of Jill. Uh, Leah McGladdery is off to Queen's University to study science. What a gorgeous picture. Carter McLean is working this year in his father's contracting business. These good-looking young kids, eh? My gosh. We must have been doing something right here to raise a bunch of young people like that. Uh, Madison. There's Madison. <laughs> Madison is going to Dalhousie to study music in the fall. Oh my goodness, so exciting. And Erin Stransky is going to Wilfrid Laurier University to study business, and she, of course, is Barb Stransky's uh, granddaughter. Uh, and then lastly, uh, just to, uh, pe three people who have graduated from the university college level, Lauren Fawcett. Uh, graduated from Guelph with a Bachelor of Applied Sciences, and she's going to take a year off to travel. Always good advice, I think, for young people. Uh, Morgan Lewis, there's Morgan. My gosh, unbelievable. He graduated from Georgian College in Leisure and, and Recreation, and he's currently working in Collingwood. What a great picture. My gosh. And then uh, Jordan Ostertag, uh, Nancy's daughter, Jordan. Uh, graduated from Carleton University in criminology. Amazing. And she's working in Collingwood. These, these young people grew up in this church. And it's just thrilling to, to see them 
uh, taking off in that way. So congratulations to all of them, to their parents, their grandparents, to their supporting communities, and we will uh, remember them in our prayers. I think that's it for announcements, people. Um, let's join together as we continue in prayer. God, thank you for this beautiful summer season as the days are so long and the weather is so beautifully warm and we're just surrounded by blessing in this time of year. Thank you for uh, the, the school year just coming to a close and people looking toward the summer and uh, you know just hoping to find some rest, some restoration and some relaxation in the summertime. God, it is good to be here together to hear words that, that we remind each other of words that come from our scriptures. And today we, we just hear words from Jesus that are, are really important in terms of finding a firm foundation in our lives. So God, as we, as we sing about these words of Jesus, as we pray about them, as we hear them, bless us that we might somehow take them into our lives uh, in real ways. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Christmas time, right? And kids come up. But the kids that are here, just ask you to stay where you are. Uh, and Madison and Haven are going to sing for the children's time. And they're singing a song about friendship, which is an important part of the church. Friendship was really important to Jesus. Jesus walked with his disciples for three years, and they always called Jesus master, teacher, rabbi, master. And then at the end, before Jesus left, he said, I now call you friends. And Jesus surrounded himself with friends all the time because friends were so important for Jesus, and he knew how important friends would be to the church as well. So this is a song about friendship and a song about love. They're kind of the same thing, really, aren't they? Love and friendship. And uh, this is Madison and Haven. You may have heard this before. the church, you be the steeple, you be the king, I'll be the people, while I was feeling such a mess, I thought you'd leave me behind, while I was being such a wreck, I thought you'd treat me unkind, but you helped me change my mind, I'll be the sun, you be the shining, be the clock, I'll be the timing. Well, I was feeling such a mess, I thought you'd leave me behind. Well, I was feeling so upset, I thought the sun never shined. Then I found forever halo. We've been best friends forever, darling. That's what's up. bird, I'll be the feather, we'll be the best of friends forever, well I was feeling such a mess, I thought you'd leave me behind, well I was feeling such a wreck, I thought you'd treat me unkind, then I with that. That's what's up. It was a good one. Uh, thank you. That was fun. So um, there is no uh, kids school per se, but the kids that are here, there's a couple of them. Um, depending on what you want to do, you can go down if you want to and help Heather in the kitchen or find something to do, but you're more than welcome to stay up here. It'd be great to have you up here as well. So uh, our scripture today is uh, a short parable, and what I like about this parable is that it's really easy to understand. It's simple. Some of Jesus' parables are, are quite complicated, 
In fact, some of the parables that Jesus tells, he has to explain them after he tells them. He has to explain them to his disciples. Well, here's what it means. This is not one of these parables. This is really nice and simple. So this is from Matthew in chapter 7. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, that's us today hearing, and puts them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose up, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet, it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose up, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority, and not as their teachers of the law. Today, for us, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Simple. Simple teaching, right? Do you know these words? Listen to these words. See if you know them. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, and some translations say do not practice love, I'm like a gonging symbol. That means you could be the best communicator in the whole world. You could be like Stephen Lewis and Martin Luther King Jr. combined, but if you do not practice love, it doesn't mean anything. You know these words. If I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, I could be the smartest kid in the graduating class, but do not practice love, it doesn't mean anything. If I have faith that can move mountains, I could believe with all my heart and soul who Jesus is, and I can believe that Jesus holds me in the palm of his hand and that I have a good future, but it doesn't mean anything if I don't practice love. It's a huge part of who Jesus is. Here's the words on the page. Here's how I want them. Here's how I want you to, to take those words and put them in your, in, into your life. You know what C.S. Lewis called that? The great writer C.S. Lewis, who wrote the Narnia Chronicles and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. C.S. Lewis called that from, from the page to the stage. You take the words of Jesus, but somehow they have to, be, they have to become evident in your life. We had a professor at Knox College. Knox College is the Presbyterian seminary where people go to learn how to be Presbyterian ministers. And Art Van Cedar was a professor I had. And he used to say, if your preaching is not somehow lived out in your church, people aren't going to be there for more than six months. In other words, if they're hearing about certain things, but they're not seeing any evidence of those things being lived out in the church, they're not going to last for more than six months. If you're preaching about, for instance, mission and outreach, and there's no mission and outreach happening in your church, people aren't going to hang around. If you're preaching about unity and community and family, but there is constant division in the church, and there's no sense of unity, family, or, 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 or a sense of belonging, he said, people just aren't going to hang around. Somehow, the, the words have to become part of what we do in our, our lives, and, and, and the word is, is practice, right? We have to practice the words of Jesus. Why is so G Jesus so passionate about us practicing the words? Well, that, that might be obvious. First of all, he doesn't want a, a bunch of hypocrites following him around. <laughs> and, and that's what people think about us often. Oh, there's Jesus followers, they say this, but they do something else. The second reason is more important, and that's putting into practice his teaching is, is precisely what will change the world. Like, if, if we don't put into practice Jesus' wor words, nothing happens in the, in the community surrounding us. We, we aren't lights into the community. But here's the most important reason for Jesus. Putting into practice the words of Jesus is precisely how God shows up in your life. 
people will say, I hear about God, but I'm just not sure if I ever have really had an experience of the God of Jesus. I don't know if I've ever really had an experience of the Christian God. I've been going to church all my life. I went to church as a kid, then I had years where I didn't, then I kind of came back. And people will say, I hear, I hear all these words, I'm just not sure if, if I'm honest, if I've really experienced God in my life. And Jesus is saying, put, put the words into practice, and that's where I'll show up. I'll show up there, and God will show up there. And that's, for God, in terms of our relationship with God, that's the most important part of putting the words into practice. That's how we experience God. And so here's the teaching again, Matthew 7. This, it's, it's simple, and kids know this song, and kids connect to this message just because it's so simple. Do you, you remember singing this song when, when the wise man built his house upon the rock? The wise, yeah, okay. <laughs> Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into, what's the word? Practice. It's like a wise man who built his house on a rock. People, listen. This is what we want in our lives. We want our lives to be a rock that when the storm hits, that we just know that that rock will not be shaken. We want to know that like, whatever we're building in our lives could be career or family or finances or whatever it is, we just want to know that our lives are just firm. So that when things happen, and, and things always come up, storms happen, we just want to know that everything's not just going to end up being a house of cards. And Jesus is just saying so simply here, put my words into practice. That's all you got to do. Because there's a tendency to hear, but, not, but then not to do. And that's the perception of Christians that so many people have. And I will tell you, I'm preaching into the mirror on this when people, I mean, I am, like, Sunday morning is all theory, isn't it? Like, I, I have the knowledge, like Paul said, you can have all knowledge, but if you don't practice love, and so it's like, I can fall into this trap of teaching, 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 and I, I, I wonder, as I'm looking into the mirror sometimes, am I actually doing this stuff? I fall into that trap. Any, any teacher does. And so we come to worship. We tune into live stream. And that's so important because we can be inspired by music. If we're here in the church in person, we can be inspired by the people around us. In, in worship, we hear teachings that can be inspiring, or we can even learn something sometimes. Worship is really important. Attendance in worship is really important. But Jesus is like, if it's just that, and if you're never ever getting around to actually doing the stuff that I'm teaching you, it just doesn't mean anything. Jesus taught people. Can you imagine... Can you imagine somebody in the crowd where Jesus is teaching and, and they say, I saw Jesus at the East Gate in Jerusalem uh, this morning. Then he was doing a matinee at the, at the Mount of Olives. And then I saw him at the temple. I, I heard Jesus preach three sermons in one, in one day. Look at how holy I am. And Jesus is like, I appreciate you coming out for the sermon. Because the hearing part is important. But if you're not doing the stuff, it doesn't mean anything. Jesus would say, I'm more concerned about you doing the sermons than just hearing them. I'm preaching into the mirror on this when people believe me. It happens all the time. Why? Because people are people. I've always admired Pope Francis because he really, does, he really tries to live a modest life. He has this little apartment in Rome that he lives in. And it's just this little, and, he, and he, he takes the subway. He doesn't like driving. He's just, he, he's just a very modest person. And, and, and he was talking about the, the value of a, of a life lived in a modest way. And then it was reported that one of the bishops, some guy in West Virginia, had this lavish lifestyle. He had, a, he had a jet. He had a big house. He was spending millions of dollars. And it's just like people are like, see, I told you. It's almost like no matter what, what some, some of us do, there's other, others of us that just, just reinforce that. You know, they're hearing, but they're not doing. Why? Because people are people. It just happens. And Jesus says, thanks for showing up for the sermon, because I appreciate when I'm at the temple not having to speak to an empty square, but it's got to be way more than just showing up for the sermon. If I... If I I, 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 can, I can have all knowledge, but if I have not love, I if I don't practice love, it doesn't mean anything. The story continues. The rains came down and the streams rose up. The, okay, sorry. The rains came down. <laughs> That's a good song. 
The streams rose up, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. That's what we want in our lives. Now, even if, if you're here and you're not a person, if maybe you're just visiting or whatever, you, you still would say, that's what I want in my life. I want something that I, I have set up or maybe a high, higher power has set up so I don't have to worry about my life being like a house of cards. That's what I want. I want it to stand firm. So here's an image from my life. When I was in university many, many years ago, I had a roommate, as many university students do, um, and uh, one week, one month, I decided I was going to get healthy. So I bought all healthy food. I just bought green stuff, loaded up my side of the freezer with health, or, or the fridge with healthy food. Do you remember having a roommate? You had the one side of the fridge, and your roommate had the other side of the fridge, or the top and the bottom. So I had, I had spinach and lettuce, and, and this was before kale was invented. There was no kale. And I had brown rice and tofu and, and fish and all that kind of stuff. And I was just all ready. The same week, the local Burger King promoted two-for-one Whoppers. So you, you, if you went into the local Burger King and you purchased a Whopper, they would give you another one for free. And my roommate and I could not turn that down. What a deal. For two weeks, we ate Whoppers every single night. We went to the Burger King, handed in our two-for-one Whopper coupon, got two Whoppers. And all that food that I knew was good for me turned to compost in my fridge. Now here's the image. Here's the image. <laughs> Just because you know something is good for you if you never getting around to, to eating it, if you never getting your, get around to ingesting that good thing, it doesn't do any good. It doesn't do any good in your life. I know about it, too bad I don't do it. It doesn't matter how much you know if you don't put what you know into practice. Verse 26. But everyone who hears these words of mine, that's us, that's... You know, you do the Bible study, you watch the live stream, you're in church, or we read, whatever. You're, that's us. We're hearing the words and does not put them into practice as a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down and the streams rose up and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash, which is not what we want to happen in our lives. There are people here today, there are people watching the live stream today who will say to you, when the storm hit, my life did not crash. And if you ask them why, they will say, you know, I know the, the grace of God is there and there's all, but they'll also say, I, somehow I was just able, somehow I was able to do the words instead of just hear them. know about it too bad I don't do it and so this is what Jesus is saying and it, 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 it's hard to hear for some because you can read all the books you can go to all the sermons you can do all the Bible studies you can go to the conferences you can have hundred percent attendance you could tune in there are people watching that have tuned in to every single live stream that First Press has put out since March of 2020 I know that people tuning in right now it doesn't do any good if you don't get around to eating the food, if you don't get around to ingesting what you know will be good for you. And that's what Jesus is saying here. It's simple. I think that's why kids like this parable. And I think that's why somebody invented a kid's song. Because kids are so perceptive. Kids can just look and say, here's the teaching, how come you're not doing it? And then they sing the song. It's so simple. Verse 28, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. 27 times in the Gospels, there is a sentence that says, and the people were amazed. Sometimes the Greek word is translated as astonished. 27 times, and the people were amazed by what Jesus had either said or done. 
And the people were amazed. Because he taught as one who had authority and not as, the, as their teachers of the law. Here was the problem with the religious leaders of Jesus' time. They knew 639 laws. That's how many laws the Jewish people had and the religious leaders of that time had to memorize all of them. And they worked hard to memorize them. And in their faith, that was the important thing. They were doing, in their minds, the right thing. They were memorizing all those laws. But for Jesus, they were missing the most important laws. Love your neighbor. Free the oppressed. Bring good news to the poor. Somehow they, they missed the forest for the trees, so to speak. And it drove Jesus crazy. It drove him so crazy that one day Jesus went into the temple and he started flipping tables over. Can you imagine how mad he must have been? You're doing, you're studying, you're going to the conferences, you're listening to the sermon, you're doing whatever it is, but you're not getting around. The, the temple was surrounded by poor people and they prevented them from getting in the temple because they didn't have enough money to buy what they needed to sacrifice on the altar. And Jesus started flipping tables. That's what got him killed. He knew that would lead to his death. Doesn't do any good, though, if you don't put the words into practice. The challenge of any church leadership is to inspire people first to hear. Hearing is good. Jesus is not saying hearing is not good. Hearing has to come first. We need to inspire people to first hear, but then inspire them to somehow do. Does that make sense? That, that's what church leadership is supposed to do. You hear, you believe, and then you do. Because we want you to know in your heart every single day that your life is built on a rock so that when the storm hits, it won't be a house of cards. That's what we want for you and for the church. I leave you with this. You're not alone because you're just like, okay, I get it. Yeah, it's simple. I, not, I can't, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm telling you. I, I, I hear. You know, one reason that I don't do after I hear is because, because it's hard. And Jesus is like, I know it's hard. Love your enemies? Seriously? Share what you have? Seriously? It's hard. So Jesus said this, I do not leave you alone. I leave you with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is all of God that will live in you. If you invite the Holy Spirit into your life, the Holy Spirit actually lives in you. God is in you today. It's not that God is near you or around you. God is actually in you today if you have done that. And that Holy Spirit will help you do what Jesus wants you to do. The Holy Spirit is your helper if you're in a church and you never hear anything about the power of the Holy Spirit, you should go to another church because the Holy Spirit sustains what we do here and it always will and it always has. The message here is just, is, look, it's simple. Jesus is saying, be aware, just be aware of the importance of practicing what I teach and when you fail, the Holy Spirit is with you and will help you. But just be aware and know that God is full of grace and mercy. So if, if, if you go through a whole week and, and nothing gets done in that regard, just try it again. The Holy Spirit will help you. Call upon that help and the grace of God surrounds you. I'll tell you this, in 22 years, 22 and a half years I've been here, people keep saying 20, 22 years. I want credit for 22 and a half that I've been at this church. I have been so proud to be a part of this community of faith. Because for all the years I've been here, it hasn't been just about hearing and it hasn't been just about believing. It has been about doing. This church has done. There's a long, long list of the way this church has been a light into the community around us. And I've been so proud to belong to this church for that reason. Because Jesus said, if you don't practice the words I'm teaching you, it doesn't mean anything. So here's what I ask you to do humbly. This summer, as individuals, pray that God might show you how to put Jesus' teachings into practice in a better way. What a simple prayer that is. 
particularly for people who are like, I never know what to pray for. I really find prayer quite difficult, to be honest, people say, because I never really know what to pray for. What a simple prayer. Go into your room, shut the door, you can sit, you can kneel, whatever, but the prayer is, God, help me, show me how I can put Jesus' teachings into practice, maybe in a way that I never have before in my life. That's the first prayer. The second prayer is pray for this church. This summer, that can be your summer prayer. Pray for this church. For the same thing, may this church in new ways, in brand new ways, put into practice the teachings of Jesus. What better prayer? What more worthy prayer could there be that we can figure out how to practice Jesus' words better? That can be our prayer this coming season of new beginnings for this church that we continue to do what we believe. Thanks be to God. Now, Heather, did you have something you wanted to say, or are you just coming in to... All right, okay. Pray for lunch? Okay, we'll do that before we leave. <laughs> um, Maggie has a song that is about this parable. This song is about building your life on a firm foundation.
the, the choreography is complicated sometimes, I understand that. <laughs> Kimberly's just going to the organ. You just wanted to follow your... Yeah. Thank you, Maggie, that was beautiful. Connor, good job. Let's pray. God, a simple prayer as we close this time of worship together. It's a prayer that is just saying thank you. We remember Jesus started every prayer he ever prayed with words of thanks, no matter where he was or what his circumstance was, even when he was in the garden on the night that he was betrayed. That night he, he prayed all night long, but his prayer started with our Father, you're in heaven, hallowed be your name. God, you have us in your hands, even when the storms hit. And there is nothing that can shake us if, if we trust that power with us. God, be with people today who are really struggling. Be with people who hear words but just don't, don't feel them or don't experience them. This Holy Spirit that is here and around us and in us is powerful. And even, God, before they ask you into their lives in that way, come to them before they even ask. We remember that that's what your grace is, and that's what your grace does. It, it comes undeserved. For people who are in that place on this day, God, come to them in that way. And that can be the first step of something great in their lives. Thank you that you do that as we leave to be lights into this world. In Jesus' name, amen.
fellowship together and share your gifts with each other as brothers and sisters in this family. May your spirit continue to move in us and abide with us. And may your countenance always shine down upon us, both now and always. Amen.